Right, so I'll be talking about Monto and what we are planning to do and what we are working on on Monto and how it actually works. So what's the story of DevOps that I already told on, on uh, software service contracts and basically the idea that for, for our current setup in the world is that we are trying to create, to, to break this wall of confusion between developers and operations, you know. Developers build the stuff, throw over the wall, operations figure it up, I need to take all the way to the cloud and then it's broken again and, you know, typical story of the DevOps. Throw over the way, mm -hmm. over the wall. Uh, so, the promise of the DevOps is to take this, uh, uh, destroy basically the wall, remove the wall by uh, putting developer and operations operation, operator in the same room, in the same team, in the same uh, backlog and uh, by that removing the communication barrier and, and allowing better delivery of the software defined by uh, business all the way to actually delivering the value. So uh, we think it's fine as intermediate step, but the actual goal is to move further and create essentially fully automated uh, delivery pipeline from the business requirements all the way to the cloud and removing the operational person from the picture entirely. Now, it doesn't mean that operations will disappear. It's in the same way as a tester. In the beginning, there was a development department, then a testing department started testing because it was just too difficult, too many bugs. The software became too complex. So, uh, the testing department or testing function was created and over time, there was a separate department and later, let's say last 10 years, we are trying to create agile teams with the testers and recently we're removing testing functionality at all. So basically testing today is just integral part of normal development. So in the same way, we see the operations kind of disappear and they just become part of normal programming. So programmable infrastructure where you just define infrastructure as code and later it is fully deployed, fully automatically deployed on the cloud. So basically, we expect the business requirement to come from some source, go to a developer that will define an application that already includes all the dependencies, all the definition of the hardware, and everything that the application requires, how it scales, how it moves around, what it does. Then some kind of magic will figure out how to put this all on the cloud. And and operations will just support the cloud, make sure the cloud works and this thing doesn't fail. They will fix the problems essentially. Right, so that's, that's our goal. Uh, that's uh, how we see, let's say, five years from now, uh, software development. <coughs> so to solve this problem, we, uh, we are currently working on a project that is led by Cisco, started and basically uh, maintained by Cisco, just called Mantle. And uh, the idea is, uh, original name of this project was uh, uh, microservices infrastructure. The idea is that we can connect all these tools and more, it's just an example of common tools that essentially everyone who starts working with containers and some other stuff trying to build uh, microservices, trying to do some kind of programmable infrastructure, slowly start adding these or similar tools and building up a fully functional end-to-end -end, uh, platform. So Mantle is a project to connect all these tools, basically put them all together and create consistent infrastructure to, mean, to build and develop uh, and, and uh, maintain microservices. So, the way it works, right, today you have your own hardware, let's say your on-premise data center plus some kind of cloud, and you have a DevOps team, and some machines, some data databases, of the, I mean, uh, some storage, some networking, just the normal DevOps stuff, like Amazon and on-premise. So, what you start with, uh, with Manto by basically deploying the infrastructure first. So the tools used to do it is Terraform to provision the hardware, virtual or physical, doesn't matter. So right now most of, uh, actually Mantle runs on 
on virtual machines, on, on cloud stack or on some cloud different uh, Google or Amazon or some old Cisco cloud. But in the future, the idea is also to allow installing it on bare metal, just removing virtual machine entirely and uh, and then setting up with Ansible or Ambuy or possibly alternative solutions, setting up the system. The core functionality at this point is uh, uh, Mesos. So essentially, at this point, uh, Mantle is Mesos with all bunch of other tools like Console and Calico and other things and some pieces of glue code and it's all installable in a single goal, essentially. So in the future, in the near future, it will also support Kubernetes and other tools and, and the point is it doesn't really matter. So what it does is just connecting all these things together and creating a consistent environment where you don't need to integrate these tools. When you have a functional environment on premise or on cloud, and as you see, you can manage both or multiple environments from the same place, and later you start deploying specific services like uh, Mesos frameworks or frameworks. So we call them infrastructure services like Marathon, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kafka, any functional thing that you can deploy on Mesos or generally on the cloud. So once you have those, those are generally for internal use of Mantle, then you can, you can uh, uh, configure higher level cloud services, something like Helk or storage services or database services or, or monitoring services. Everything is just part of this big cloud that is just doing everything. And those are essentially interfaces for applications that uh, wants to use cloud functionality, essentially microservices that want to use cloud functionality, and they just, just have this access uh, out of the box as part of the system. For example, the questions you want to answer when you ask this thing, or actions you want to perform is something like, uh, please schedule these 10 containers, and if average load on 10 containers go goes beyond 70%, add 20% more capacity to the cloud. And if it goes be, uh, below 30%, then add, remove some of the capacity. So this kind of uh, operations are just essentially uh, built-in functionality of the cloud that you don't need to develop yourself like you do today. So this is essentially Mantle. And again, it's a Cisco project and we are part of it together with multiple other companies. And uh, uh, right. And basically, this is additional product on top of Mantle. It's called Project Shift, and this is the commercial offering of Cisco. That uh, once you have Mantle, you can install it on premise, on cloud. It is free, open source, and later uh, you can use Shift for specific enterprise level and whatever uh, applications. So, essentially you are as a developer, you define an application in a certain way and probably next or one after the next meetups we will show how you define the services, uh, what kind of work and this definition of the services and the way you deploy them on the, on the infrastructure. But essentially you define a service and Chip will help you to deploy it to Mantle and then this, this uh, platform that already has all the cloud functionality plus the maintenance capabilities. Right. So, uh, the last thing we are working, which is uh, in the future will be basically the mo probably the most important part of this ecosystem is policy-based deployment. So you want to say, uh, I mean, you don't want to say to infrastructure, I want specific number of CPUs and I want specific DNS record that talks to this and that and uh, configuring all kinds of specific volumes. You just want to say, I want infrastructure with certain policies, like uh, latency shouldn't go higher than this number, uh, it should always have enough CPU, it should always have enough this and that in these boundaries, and it's responsibility of the system to make sure that your SLA is, uh, uh, is uh, 
supported basically. It's, uh, it's working well and then it will scale on its own if needed or migrate to another cloud if needed, this kind of operations. So policies are basically higher level expression of your needs for the application. So you, you will never say I need specifically 10 and a half CPUs, something like that. You just say, just make sure I have enough CPUs and this is the definition some, somehow. Uh, again, we are working on this kind of definitions right now and in the next meetups we will talk more about them. At least at this point, the final goal, the final, final vision is to create a fully automated pipeline where you define a service, you can test it locally with something like mini Mesos, which is like a Mesos that you can run on a uh, local machine. Then push your service definition to some kind of store and then run it on, on some cloud platforms. And uh, this is very similar to current Docker pipeline, right? So uh, uh, process. So you, you have a Docker file, then you do Docker build, you push it to the hub, and then you can do, like, consume it somewhere else. Right. So, uh, in addition to actually working on the system and defining these policies and uh, uh, extending mantle and uh, doing all the stuff within mantle and shipped, we are also currently working on multiple applications. Basically, uh, show that putting application, microservice application on mantle is useful, it's easier, and uh, actually people should do that and not building something like that on their own. So one of the applications we're doing right now is a Meteor Drones application, and I'll talk a bit more about this, and then some others like video streaming and some other stuff. So essentially we are building like demo applications, like pet store applications, uh, how you build microservices and how you use them on Mantle. So specifically with this Meteor Drone, the idea is that right now it's quite difficult to predict weather because the, the hardware to measure stuff is difficult. It's like expensive and, uh, and they do calculations in, uh, in big batches once in a while. So there's this company in Switzerland that's building these drones that they go to different heights with all kinds of sensors and in real life they collect information and send it to the ground. And then based on that you can very quickly can adjust the weather and it can be in multiple places. You can attach this, uh, uh, these sensors to drones or cars or some other equipment and it's, uh, it's basically instead of measuring in four places you can measure in 10,000 places at the same time and just predict weather much better. You can also like measure like uh, kilometer in, uh, in the air uh, on top of your house and actually say, well, is, is it actually draining there? So what we're planning to do is some kind of collecting this data and creating some kind of interface to show what's going on, what's the going on with winds and pressure and whatever weather means actually. Uh, combine it and, uh, and create some view of uh, what's happening from these drones. Essentially drones, it sounds like very impressive, which it, it is. The hardware itself is very impressive, but from our perspective, it's just a bunch of CSV lines, right, coming from somewhere. So uh, it's just nothing. It's like a uh, you know, very simple text format with this thing. Each line includes these parameters, and that's about it. And you have like a lot of them coming, if you have a lot of drones, obviously. So, what we're doing is basically collecting this information and creating an application to build, uh, I'm not going into technical details because it's not exactly ready this application, but uh, we're building this application in microservices style uh, to run natively on Mantle. Right, so uh, next, and just two more slides, yes, and uh, uh, Victor will uh, show essentially one of the services on this level that we are building. 
which is relying on three services on this level. So ELK is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Those are three uh, tools, and uh, just doesn't matter what they do right now. But they're basically Mesos frameworks running within Mantle, and together combined they create a higher level functionality called, called ELK. Right, so basically collecting logs all over, uh, pushing them into uh, Elasticsearch, and showing graphical presentation in Kibana. Uh, so this is typical Mesos cluster. In our case, it, so the, the demo will be on Mesos, not in Mantle, but essentially it's the same thing. So any, any framework working on Mesos will also work on Mantle. Uh, so what we're going to show <coughs> is basically Mesos cluster with uh, multiple frameworks talking to each other.